A moment ago, you said you you essentially see Trump and Biden as the same, different different issues. But do you really believe that when people talk about the threat to democracy that Trump poses, do you really think that that is is it an equal yeah, evil I mean, to I, Biden? I, I mean, listen, I can make the argument that President Biden is a much worse threat to democracy. And the reason for that is President Biden is the first candidate in history, the first president in history that has used the federal agencies to censor political speech, so to censor his opponent. I, you know, I can say that because I just won a case in the Federal Court of Appeals and now before the Supreme Court that shows that he started censoring not just me. 37 hours after he took the oath of office, he was censoring me. No president in the country has ever done that. The greatest threat to democracy is not somebody who questions election returns, but a president of the United States who used the power of his office to force the social media companies, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, to open a portal and give the access to that portal to the FBI, to the CIA, to the IRS, to CISA, to NIH, to censor his political critics. President Biden, for the first, first president in history, to use the secret, his power over the Secret Service, to deny Secret Service protection to one of his political opponents for political reasons. He's weaponizing the federal agencies, those are really critical threats Donald to democracy. Donald Trump, of course, tried to overturn a free and fair election. He tried to overturn one, right? He's, he's still fighting in court. Yes. He's a, how is that not a threat to democracy? Well, I think that is a threat to democracy. If he, yeah, him overthrow, trying to overthrow the election clearly is a threat to democracy. But the, the question was, who is a worse threat to democracy? And what I would say is, I, you know, I'm not going to answer that question, but I can argue that President Biden is because the First Amendment, Aaron, is the most important. Adams and Hamilton and Madison said, we put the guarantee of freedom of expression in the First Amendment because all of our other constitutional so, rights depend on it. If you have a government that can silence its opponents, it has license for any atrocity. So just to be clear, you're saying you could make an argument that President Biden is a worse threat to democracy than, than Donald Trump. Absolutely. That's what you just said. But who else has so, ever tried to, who else has ever tried to send, what president in history mm -hmm. has ever tried to censor political opponents? What president has weaponized the federal agency? You know, when my father came into the Justice Department, the first week he was there, he, he got all of the branch and division attorneys together, and he said, whatever we do, we are not going to use the power of the Justice Department for well, political Trump, reasons. Well, said that and he would do that. He, is, he has said that he well, would course, do that. Of course, and that is reprehensible. And he is the only president who's tried to overthrow the results of an election. Well, you know, you know what? Let me, let me say something about that. I'm not going to defend President Trump on that. That was appalling. And there's many things that President Trump has done that, that are appalling. But in 2001, we had an election stolen in this country during the Bush Gore election. In 2004, I wrote an award-winning article for Rolling Stone that showed how that election was stolen from John Kerry. So I don't think, and most Americans agree with me about 2001, that it was stolen election from, our, from the Democratic Party candidate. So I don't think people who say that the election is stolen or not, that we shouldn't treat, we shouldn't make pariahs of those people. We shouldn't demonize them. We shouldn't vilify them. What we should be doing is saying, let's all get together, Republicans and Democrats, and fix the election system so that it cannot be fixed, so that we're the exemplary democracy of the world. We ought to, you know, Las but Vegas, let, that, let but, me tell you this, Las okay. Vegas is built on machines that can count and never make mistakes. Should, can't we, can we make an a, a election machine and can't we have an electoral process that mm -hmm. every when American you go through says all whatever the data, happens, okay, hold on, it, but cannot when, be, it, can't, it can't be, it can't be fixed. I understand that <laughs> we want elections to be as perfect as they possibly can be. Yeah. And one should not use the fact that the election was not stolen and was not cheated to not try to perfect it. I understand that distinction. But when you do as you're doing and you open the door to well, we want every machine. You're opening the door to people who can say, well, then that's exactly what I'm saying. The machines miscounted, the machines did this, but they didn't. Every single analysis has shown that that did not happen, right? As you know, do you worry that you're opening the door for well, people I'm, to believe I'm this? Not, Look at the Republican no, listen, primary voters and that they believe. I'm not, I'm not worried. I, never, I don't worry 
about how people might misinterpret my words. I, what I said, I mean, and I'm careful about how I use language. Oh, I'm not saying that that election was, was just, that there was cheating. I've never said that. What I've said is that there are problems, particularly, Aaron, if you, if you don't have paper ballots. The, ele the election machines can be fixed in various ways, and that's just a fact. What we ought to have is we ought to have machines, and we ought to have paper ballots at the same time, and we ought to have a very low threshold to get a recount of the paper ballots. And that just makes sense. It's common sense. But we, you know, if we implement that in every jurisdiction, you're not going to have problems. We are Americans at each other's throats. I mean, so you're talking other, about a technical deal. thing, like instead of having one half of 1% be the trigger for a recount, you would put it even lower. I mean, that's that's the sort of reform well, you're talking I, I, about here. Whatever. I'm not, I'm not choosing a particular threshold, but a threshold that makes sense. That's a very low threshold where you get a recount if you, you know, if you, if there's some question. So, uh, you know, and that's, I, I don't think this is, I'm saying something that's controversial. I'm saying something that I think most Americans, virtually any American, would agree with, let's have an election system that even 10% of the Americans who are crazy people, and even they won't question because our election system is the best election system in the world. And nobody, you know, I mean, Vermont, for example, has a very, very good election system. Nobody ever questions the Vermont election system. And we ought to be able to do the same thing in every state. We're, we are supposed to be the template for democracy in every country in the world. Let's make sure we put a man on the moon. We, you know, we've had all these accomplishments. Let's make sure we have a system that nobody is questioning, even crazy people. People are, are always going to question it, though. Well, they're okay. always going to question it, and that it, you it, you want to narrow the margin of people who are questioning it to as as much as possible like, by, by giving nobody any kind of legitimate claim about it. And that's all I'm saying. And what I'm saying is not saying I'm not saying that President Trump won the election or that President Biden. I've never said anything or suggested anything like that. All I'm saying is let's focus on the issues that bring people together. Uh, than constantly focusing on the polarization, on the issues that drive Americans apart and have us all at each other's throats with this very, very toxic polarization and demonization of each other.